sufficient rest periods between the exercise, even if you're exercising correctly, not allowing enough days to rest for rest and recovery for your body to repair for you to keep exercising or you're always working from a deficit. But let's look at what happens from either end. Too much exercise or too much of the wrong kinds of exercises can lead to injury, inflammation, uh, trigger points or muscle spasms in the body, uh, pain. Lack of exercise can lead you to injury. You don't exercise or you're not very active, but you do something simple like picking up the groceries or gardening. That can cause muscle strain that, you're not, that your body's not used to. Uh, so you end up having pain, you end up with inflammation, uh, you end up with trigger points, insufficient rest and recovery, end up with pain, lack of exercise, your muscles atrophy, uh, and the blood flow slows down so you're not getting enough nutrients so the tendons get tighter and the ligaments uh, get tighter. Okay, so with exercise, the key to maintaining that midline to prevent the stagnation and inflammation is a stagnation in an area, injuries, trigger points, all these pain centers, um, is to do the proper exercise for your fitness level and your activity level, to start out slow and move forward, to not do a lot and then skip days and do a little bit, but always keep the balance in between. And if you have a hard day of working out, you need sufficient rest and exercise in order to recuperate so you don't fall into these trigger point and pain and atrophy areas. And if you're not exercising at all, uh, like most people who are suffering chronic pain, either they're not exercising so it causes the pain or the pain is so much that they can't exercise it hurts, then you need to do something simple like starting with Qigong standing breathing exercises, moving that to walking exercises, and from walking, taking the steps from there and finding a program to do that. Okay, let's talk about pain, but I want to talk about back pain specifically, although the excess deficiency stagnation model works for all types of pain. Uh, today we're going to talk about back pain and excess. What are excesses in a life that cause back pain? Well, excessive amounts of stress, obviously. People are under high amounts of stress and they suffer um, back pain, shoulder pains, night pains, muscle spasms, tension in the body. Uh, stress causes a dysfunction of the liver. Uh, which causes an adverse or dysfunctional flow of the blood. It slows it down, which then you can't, the blood's not bringing fresh nutrients and oxygen to the muscles and tissues and the tendons, and pain creates. Uh, emotions, em the emotional or psychosomatic connection of pain uh, is, a proven, is a proven cause of pain. And we have here excessive amounts. Everybody worries, everybody has stress, everybody has an anxiety uh, of some, of, about certain things. But having an excess amount of emotions for prolonged periods of time creates low back pain, creates shoulder, neck pain, mid back pain. Because these emotional um, dysfunctions lead to improper dieting, improper eating, improper sleep, improper sitting postures, hunched over. The whole body goes into postures that, aren't, that lead to the stagnation and the pain. Uh, excessive sitting is another cause of back pain. People who drive a truck, a taxi, sit at a desk, uh, or at home on the couch all day or at the computer. Uh, excessive sitting also leads to back pain because again, you're freezing your body in one position and you're not getting enough blood flow, oxygen, and nutrients. The muscles don't have a chance to warm up and move. Everything is being locked in place. And most of us go from sleeping in a bed to, sitting in our, to eating breakfast at the table, to sitting in our car, to sitting at our desk at work, home, sit at the table for dinner, sit on the couch and watch TV and go back to bed. Too much excessive sitting leads to back pain. Uh, strain, excessive amounts of physical exercise that your body's not properly warmed up for. Lifting heavy, heavy objects, uh, lifting too many weights, uh, martial arts without proper warm up leads to muscle strain. And muscle strain uh, is also a cause of back pain. Uh, dietary reasons, excessive amounts of caffeine. Caffeine is a diuretic, so it forces your body to lose water. Excessive amounts of caffeine um, lead to that dehydration effect. And your kidneys have uh, a built-in uh, mechanism where it needs to store X amount of water in your body in order to, to allow the proper functioning of all of the muscles and tissues in the body, the tendons to keep the lungs moist, to keep your skin moist. And when you're dehydrated from either, either not drinking enough water or having too much caffeine, sodas, coffee, etc., is that the amount of toxins that are in your bladder to be expelled through the urine um, 
become greater than the amount of fluid that your kidneys releases into the bladder to move those out. So your urine gets darker in color. The darker the color of urine, unless you're taking multivitamins. But the darker the color of the urine means the higher percentage uh, or concentrate of toxins in the body to the ability of water left for the kidney to take pure water and fluids and move back through the body for the functioning of the body, the tendons, the blood, and so on. So excessive amounts of poor dietary choices also leads to back pain. If we look at the uh, deficiencies of back pain, lack of movement, too much sitting down again, too much standing all day again, not enough exercise, but in all motions, even our walking is just forward and back. We're not twisting, we're not moving, we're not doing diagonal moves, not enough. Most people aren't doing enough stretching for their hips, for their low back, for any of these things. Lack of that kind of movement, physical movement, therapy movements, uh, walking movements, twisting movements, also is a cause of back pain. Lack of water intake, again we talked about the dehydration effects on the tendons and the muscles and, and that holding toxins in the body because the toxins are going back through, locking in the muscle tissue and you get what's called, what we, the layman's call muscle spasms and people in the therapy fields call trigger points. Uh, deficiency of nutrition or nutrient dense foods leads to an inability to fuel the body the way it needs to keep it moving and keep everything healthy. So again, we leave the pain. Now, these deficiencies and the excesses um, lead to a stagnation. Sitting, I have, again, you know, an excess of sitting is actually a stagnation because the sitting is an unmoving, basically, except for your arms and neck, it's an unmoving position. So, and sitting is the cause of pain, it's a stagnation. Excessive sitting is a stagnation. Trigger points is a stagnation. It's blood and t it's toxins and metabolic waste locked in the tissue. It's stagnating, causes trigger points, which cause pain. And everyone who's got pain in their body uh, has trigger points somewhere. Um, poor posture, sitting posture, standing posture, sleeping posture, also is a stagnation because you're holding an incorrect position, which is training your body in the wrong way, not allowing things to move equally and balanced, and it creates pain. Tight muscles and tendons, aside from the trigger points, you can have what's called hypertension.